welcome back to another video. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Betty. I am the baking instructor here on this channel and over on bakerbetty.com. Now today we are continuing on with our meringue series and I'm gonna show you how to make French macarons. Now these cookies are notorious for being really finicky and difficult to perfect. So if you don't get them perfect on the very first try, don't get discouraged. It's probably gonna take you a few tries to get them right. And there are a lot of differing opinions and different methods for making these cookies, but this is the method that I like best. Now, there are two main methods for making macarons, and that is the French meringue method and the Italian meringue method. We are going to use the French meringue method because I think that's the best place to start for beginners. It's a little less intimidating than the Italian meringue method. So, to start, we are going to pulse our powdered sugar and our almond flour in a food processor. Now, the reason why I recommend doing this is not all almond flour is created equal. Some is a little more coarse than others, and we wanna make sure that there's no large clumps of almonds in our macaron mixture. Now, as always, the full written recipe is linked down in the description box. So I have my powdered sugar in my food processor and I'm adding my almond flour. And I just wanna process this about 10 times, just 10 pulses to get that all broken up and make sure that the almond flour is really nice and fine. Okay, and once you have your mixture pulsed, we are going to go ahead and put it through a, a sifter just to make sure there aren't any other clumps. And if there's anything left in the top of your sifter after you sift it, you don't wanna pour that into your mixing bowl. Any of those clumps, you just wanna to toss out. Now the sifting part is also going to aerate the mixture and just ensure that we have really smooth batter and that we don't deflate our egg whites too much when we mix it in. I'm just gonna sift this over a medium mixing bowl and we're gonna keep this separate from our egg whites until those are whipped. Okay, there's just a few little bits of almond flour left in my sifter, so I'm just gonna leave those in there. I'm not going to add those into my mixture, but I, now I'm gonna add a little bit of salt into my mixture and just stir that up to combine. And then we're gonna move on to working with our egg whites. Okay, so next we are going to move on to making the French meringue. So I have a couple eggs here and I'm going to separate the yolks from the whites. And you always want your whites to be at room temperature when you are making meringue and that's going to help them whip up to their fullest potential. And you wanna be really careful not to get yolks in your whites. Okay, so I have just my egg whites in my mixing bowl and I'm going to mix these on medium speed until they are really frothy and starting to hold soft peaks before I start adding any of my sugar. Okay, so my egg whites are really, really frothy. They're starting to hold some really soft peaks. And now I'm going to start adding my granulated sugar about a half tablespoon at a time. And I'm going to mix that in for a few seconds before I add more sugar. And you really don't wanna rush this process because your egg whites won't be as stable if you add too much sugar too quickly. So just go slowly and continue whisking on medium speed. So once all the sugar is added, you wanna keep whipping the mixture and checking it occasionally to see how stiff the peaks are getting. We're going to wanna to whip this till they are fully stiff peaks, but before they get all the way whipped, we're going to stop and add our vanilla extract, and then that's also where you would add some food coloring. So I'm gonna keep whipping, but I'm going to keep checking them, and I'll add that right before we get to the end of whipping. Okay, so to check the peaks, you're just going to take the whisk from your mixer and kind of stir it around in there and then pull up on it. And if it's flopping over a lot like it is here, then you want to keep whisking. You want those to stand really nice and tall. Okay. 
Okay, so they are very close. You might be able to tell that it's just leaning over just slightly there. And so now I am going to go ahead and add a little bit of vanilla. I'm actually using vanilla bean paste here, but you can use vanilla extract. Um, and then I'm going to add a little bit of gel food coloring. Now you don't really want to use a liquid food coloring in your macarons because you can kind of ruin the texture. So I'm just using some gel, um, teal gel food coloring. And I like to just get a couple of toothpicks and kind of stick those in there and then streak that through the egg whites. Now, this is going to lighten in color quite a bit once you add your flour or your um, almond flour and powdered sugar mixture. So you do want to try and go a little deeper on the color than you want the final color to be. Okay, and now I'm just going to mix that in and then continue whipping until we get fully stiff peaks. Okay, so the egg whites are holding stiff peaks now. So that means we are ready to go with our egg whites. So I'm gonna grab my almond flour and sugar mixture and we're gonna combine the two. Okay, so this is the part that's probably the trickiest part of making macarons. And this is actually called the macronage stage. It has its own word because it's actually a very finicky process, but you want to fold your almond flour and sugar into the egg whites just enough, but not too much. We do need to knock a little bit of this air out, but we don't wanna to knock too much air out of it. So what you wanna do is we're gonna start with about a third of the dry mixture and you're going to stir this in completely. Now for this first addition, you don't need to be too careful about knocking air out, but you also don't wanna to be too aggressive with it. We're not trying to stir every bit of air out. But once that is stirred in, now we're gonna add the second third. So we're gonna add this in three additions. Now for this addition, we are going to go ahead and fold it, being pretty gentle with it and taking our time. We're gonna make sure all of those dry ingredients are folded in before we add the rest. Now the proper technique for folding is you're going to cut down through the mixture with your spatula down to the bottom of the bowl and then you bring what's from the bottom up to the top and you scrape around the bowl and turn the bowl 90 degrees. So this takes a bit of practice and just take your time and be gentle. Okay, so now I'm gonna add the final third of the mixture and fold that in. Again, being very gentle and trying not to knock too much air out of it. So you're gonna cut down through the middle of the mixture down to the bottom of the bowl and bring what's on the bottom up to the top. And then you wanna make sure you're really scraping around the edges of the bowl too. So the texture that we are looking for is we want the mixture to slowly flow off of the spatula back into the bowl. So right now it's kind of plopping off of the spatula, which means we need to keep folding a little more. We need to continue mixing. So if you under mix your batter, you're not gonna get the right texture. But if you over mix your batter, you're also not going to get the right texture. This is the thing that you really have to practice. And when it does start flowing um, slowly off your spatula, you want it to be where it takes a few seconds to dissolve back into the batter. So I'm gonna show you here what the right texture is. It's kind of hard to explain in words. You just have to see it. You have to get a feel for it. So right now it's flowing slowly off my spatula and it's kind of holding shape as it flows back into the batter before it dissolves completely in. Okay, so I have a pastry bag here fit with a round tip and I'm just gonna go ahead and fill all of my batter in here so that we can pipe our macarons. And once it's all in the piping bag, go ahead and gently press it all the way down to the bottom so that you don't have any air bubbles. Okay, so now I have a sheet pan fit with some parchment paper and I also went ahead and printed out 
um, two of these little macaron templates. I'm not great at piping and keeping everything the exact same size, so this helps me try to keep my macarons the same size. So the piping part is a little bit tricky. I'm still trying to perfect it. But what you wanna do is you do have to work kind of quickly and you're going to hold the piping bag straight up and down over your parchment paper, give even pressure and then release before you pull up on the bag. And one of the things you kind of want to do is give a little bit of a flick as you pull up to try and avoid having a really big peak on your macaron. That's something I'm still learning how to perfect, but just keep practicing it. Okay, so once you get your macarons piped, one of the most important steps is tapping them on the counter to get any air bubbles out. So you're gonna tap it about five times. Okay. So now, before these go in the oven, we do need to let them sit. We want them to form kind of a skin on the top of them, and that's what helps them rise and get the iconic macaron feet, as they call them. So we're gonna let these sit for about 30 to 45 minutes, and I'll show you how it should look. Basically, you want a film on top that you can run your finger over, and it's not going to get batter on your finger. So I'll come back and show you once they're ready to go in the oven. Okay, so it's been about 40 minutes for my macarons and these are ready to go. And the way that you know they're ready to go in the oven is you can take a finger and just rub it right over the top gently. And if it's not tacky at all, it's dry, then you can go ahead and bake your macarons. Now we're gonna bake these at a pretty low temperature, about 285 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's gonna let them puff up and get those nice feet on the bottom. I bake mine for about 17 minutes, but the way you're gonna check to see if your macarons are done is you're going to gently touch the top of the macaron, and if it kind of comes away from the bottom, then you do need to let it go a little bit longer. Now, you want to avoid opening the oven, though, for the first part of baking. You only wanna check during those last few minutes of baking. So I would suggest setting a timer for about 15 minutes, and then you can check it and let it go for a little bit longer if you like. All right, we're gonna go ahead and bake these. Okay, so it's been about 15 minutes and I'm just going to gently nudge these. And actually I can see that they are completely attached to the feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and call these done and I'm gonna pull them out of the oven. Now our macaron shells have completely cooled. I just let them cool right on the sheet trays because if you do try to lift them off the parchment paper too quickly, they can kind of stick to the parchment. So just let them cool completely on the sheet trays. And these shells turned out really nice. They are smooth on top. They do have those iconic feet, which is what you're always looking for on a macaron. Now a macaron professional might say that these aren't quite perfect. They do have a few little air bubbles in the feet and that can happen from not tapping them hard enough when you go to tap the trays or not enough times. So next time I might tap it one or two more times or just be a little more firm when I do the tapping. But overall, they look really, really nice. Now you can fill these with whatever you like. Probably the most classic thing to fill them with is buttercream. And I just have a really simple vanilla American buttercream here. I'll leave some links down below to my different frosting recipes for you to try. Um, with these macarons, but you could also use ganache, you could use a lemon curd, you could use jam, there's all kinds of things you can use. Now before you fill them, you kind of want to go through and sort of match up the pears. They're all just slightly different sizes, so I like to find the ones that are the most similar in size and flip over one that is going to have the filling on it and just kind of match them up so that they fit together really nicely. And then when you fill them, if you do want to add um, a filling like a jam or something like that, you can actually just pipe a little border around the shell and then you could add some curd or jam right in the center. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and fill it up with the buttercream. And then you just want to set the shell on top and very gently squeeze it so that it goes right out to the edges. 
and there you have your little macaron. Now, a lot of people do say that macarons are better if you put them in the refrigerator for about two days before you eat them, 24 hours to 48 hours. I know that's very difficult, so they're perfect to just eat right away, but if you do want to let them sit in the refrigerator for a little while, you can do that. I would take them out about 10 minutes before serving them to take the chill off, and these also freeze very, very well. You can put them in an airtight container and put them in the freezer for up to three months, but you do wanna pull them out of the freezer and let them sit at room temperature for about 30 minutes before serving them if you do freeze them. Now that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed so you never miss a video. And I'm always happy to answer any of your questions. You can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll be back next time with another recipe tutorial.